So you were saying? So I think gratitude is so important, even when you're like frustrated with the way that our society works. Like it's um, we evolved these this culture, these practices, um, the ways of organizing business. We we invented money. You know, we created all of this stuff, and it's a, and we did it in order to get out of the rain, like to to not be cavemen anymore. And that doesn't mean that it was the best solution, or maybe not even the best solution at the time. Um, but it's a solution that moved us forward to this point that we're at now. And you know, the question is, how do we want to take that forward? Like, okay, if that was a prototype and it served some of our interests well, got us out of the rain, um, allowed us to feed our families, allowed us to maintain our tribes, allowed us to grow cities, um, allowed us to, you know, the, the joy of ballet, it allowed us, you know, the pleasure of, um, you know, fine foods. Like, there's so many gifts that have come out of that process. Um, but it still is not as good as it could be. So from that place of gratitude for um, taking us out of the wild and out of the cave and growing human culture over hundreds and thousands of years, how do we stand on top of that and take it as a prototype to create something that works better? And I'm not saying that like in 15 years it'll be uh, radically different, oh my god, we're finally in utopia, because I don't believe that's really possible either, but it's, it's something to iterate on. Like, okay, whatever you don't like about it, um, to come from a place of gratitude that it solved some kind of problem for humanity, and now it's just been, we need to be more discerning about how to apply our innovations, um, what to do with them, um, how to tweak them, and just treating it as a prototype so that we can keep growing um, from that place of like, stand on the innovations of the past um, in order to create the world that we wanna be in in the future. And so when I hear people going into like judgment um, and like refuting the past as if it's uh, something bad, um, you know, my heart weeps because uh, I can just see my grandfather, who was a bridge builder, um, trying so hard to make things better for his children. You know, and if you if you can imagine that all those people before were trying to make things better for their family, for the people around them, um, to say, "Well, that was terrible." What what ended up coming from that? I think insults the gift. It was like it was a try. It was an attempt to make the world better. So. Um, I don't know, coming, coming at it from gratitude and building from it. Like, yes, agree. Problems with current iteration, fix, adapt, try something else, keep adjusting, um, keep making it better, right? I, I resonate with what you're saying. I just have an issue with the, uh, the system of top-down management. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing the same thing, the same war, the same violence, the same suffering, the same poverty since before the beginning of time. And it's that top-down management system by fear often. Mm. Because by fear you're able to move people and, play, uh, and things, amass uh, uh, an energy. Mm. And it's, often it's self-destructive in many ways. I hear your gratitude, but I also am very uh, concerned about normalizing, mm. and that in a normal society, mm -hmm. reality may be define us so that we don't even, we, you know, it's kind of like in the military, it says, yours is to do or die and not to question why. What does that say about our society and, and, and the people and the world that we live in, that we have so many wars and so many violences and so much fear and poverty? It said that the trade of kings was in war. 
they traded war because war gave them power. And often war gives you more power over your own people mm -hmm. and is a tool that the powers that be have used. So I, uh, since our conversation is about normal mm -hmm. and about the trade-offs of being normal, yeah. And you were just talking about gratitude, and I'm talking about systems that right. are, don't work for us, but we keep on repeating since the beginning of forever. Mm. What would you say to people of the future? Well, I would disagree that we've had top-down management forever and ever. I think that that was an innovation, and I think it's the innovation that allowed us to go to a different scale of humanity. So without it, we have to operate, you know, um, I guess I would give in to the Dunbar number thing, like you can't transcend 150 people in a group until you have top down. Um, and now I think we're pushing past that. And, um, and I would give something like uh, Wikipedia, you know, as the obvious example of lots of people coming together and orienting around a, a shared vision and a shared goal in order to get things done. And so we're learning how to do collective activity at scale without top-down management. Um, but I think it takes a, a level of maturity in all the participants to be able to show up in a way that gets things done. And so, uh, you know, there's this tension between the development of the individual and the development of the collective, and, and I think they, they bounce off of each other. So we've done a lot of self-development that's going to enable us to do collective development. Um, and it's messy. It's really messy because the feedback loops, I mean, if you're going to talk in systems language, the feedback loops are decades, um, sometimes centuries, many times centuries. You know, it's hundreds and hundreds of years of working with an organizational model and seeing what the consequences of that are. And so if you stop looking at that system from the century or um, millennium view and you say this individual, this person who suffered, this person who had this experience, the, the results in the last year um, of the number of people who were impacted by this process, you know, your heart cracks open, right? Like, ow, how do we have to have any of that suffering? Um, and yet that seems to be how it's evolved to how we are no longer out in the rain and are now, uh, you know, living in cities and um, with cell phones and stuff. Is it the right trade-off to have, you know, more people and, and be at a scale over 150 people for any tribe? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer. Um, I'm willing to operate in the, this is the one that we're in. Um, but I'll, I'll bet you that if you go back far enough to before there was top-down management, there were still people killing people. You know, even at small scale, even in little gangs, like, we fight. Well, I, 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 what I'm saying is I think we still have a gangocracy. Mm. You know, the, the gang that is in power mm -hmm. will stay in power at all costs because they figure that they deserve to be in power. You know, one of my favorite books is The Starfish and the Spider. I know uh, the guys who did that. I was at their opening. Mm, very good. So you know, like, the, the spiders are going to lose their heads. And this is the, the implicit power versus explicit power. And implicit power might have longer timelines, but eventually it is more powerful. And so... I think. I place my faith in that. Does that make sense to you? Well, I, I think that's in line with who you are and, and your uh, positive uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I can't help it. hearing that positive thinking and going critic dismissing. No, 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 I was just accepting that. It might be my internal critic that's going, uh, <laughs> No, no, I, I was accepting that I, uh, as uh, on face value. Mm -hmm. I wasn't judging it. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what do you think the last person on the planet would say to us? 